Good afternoon, everyone. Please take a seat. And it is a special honor for me to be able to say, welcome to the White House. And welcome especially to the 2023 International Women of Courage Award Ceremony to all of you participating here in person uh, and tuning in from around the world. For 17 years now, U.S. Secretaries of State have recognized International Women of Courage who are leading the charge for progress around the world. This year, for the first time, we honor the awardees here at the White House. And that really is a reflection of just how highly President Biden, First Lady, and this administration prioritize gender equality and human rights. Uh, Dr. Biden, thank you for bringing us here today. Uh, but thank you more than that for everything that you're doing every single day to be such a remarkable role model to so many women around the world and for your incredibly tireless efforts to lift up the voices of brave women everywhere around the world. So we're joined today by ambassadors from across the globe who are essential partners in all of our efforts to make sure that women and girls can reach their full potential. We have senior leaders from across the United States government here, Ambassador Linda Thomas-Greenfield, our champion, our voice at the United Nations. Deputy Secretary of Defense, Kath Hicks, Under Secretary of State, Arzea, our advocate for human rights. Jen Klein, Kat Fotovat, who are leaders of our global gender policy. Uh, and of course, White House Press Secretary, Karine Jean-Pierre, also such a powerful voice for our country uh, and for this administration around the world. And I also want to point out our team from the Bureau for Educational and Cultural Affairs. We're working with so many of you every single day in the work that you're doing. Uh, we're also joined by members of the State Department's locally employed staff. Um, they're literally the lifeblood of our missions in every country in the world. Uh, to be here today, some of them have traveled from more than a dozen countries in Asia, Africa, Europe, South America, and the Middle East. It's wonderful to be with you today as well. Thank you. And in the audience, we have several previous winners of the International Women of Courage Award who are continuing their inspiring work. And the First Lady and I had an opportunity yeah. to uh, greet them, uh, to be able to say in person what we were not able to do the last couple of years, which is congratulations and thank you for the incredible work that you're doing. And of course, last but not least, our guests of honor, this year's International Women of Courage. Welcome to all of you. When Secretary of State Condoleezza Rice launched this initiative in 2007, she did so to honor women creating brighter futures for themselves, for their communities, and for generations to come. Since then, this award has recognized more than 180 women from over 80 countries around the world. And that includes this year's honorees, 11 truly extraordinary people. Um, as you'll hear, these women are reporting on Russian atrocities in Ukraine. They're fighting for equal opportunities for women and girls in Mongolia. They're defending democracy in the Central African Republic. They're protecting indigenous land in Costa Rica. They're advocating for the rights of refugees people with disabilities, the LGBTQI plus community. Because of their work, and even uh, as they do it every single day, uh, they are faced with extraordinary challenges that, as you learn about them, read about them, are humbling. Uh, they, their loved ones in many cases, have endured harassment. They've endured violence. Some have been imprisoned. Others have been subject of misinformation, and online attacks, day in, day out. And yet, each and every one has refused to be intimidated. In every region, there are other women doing this work who we can't name individually, uh, in some cases because the attention would put them at even greater risk. So we found a new way to honor them. Uh, this year, we're launching a group award named after a pioneer and champion of equality, 
the great Secretary of State, Madeleine Albright. We have... We have um, several members of the Albright family uh, here today to help us celebrate. I like to think I'm an extended member of that family. Um, for me, as I've, as I've told um, our friends, uh, I hear Madeleine Albright's voice in my head on a regular basis. The clarity with which she spoke and what she said continues to resonate and continues to inspire me in the work uh, that I and my team are doing. But you're, you honor us with your presence today. Thank you for being here. Around the world, uh, women in all of their diversity are often the ones on the front lines of change. And yet, at the same time, they face still greater obstacles to their political participation. They experience gender-based violence and human rights abuses. They hold less economic and social power. We are committed to changing that. Defending the rights of women and girls is rooted in our democratic values of human rights and fundamental freedoms for all. And when we advance equality, and defend the rights of women, we improve life for everyone. When peace is forged with the participation and the leadership of women, it's more likely to last. We know this from experience. Closing the gender gap in the global workforce would add $28 trillion to the global economy. And as Secretary Albright once said, we simply cannot build the future that we want without the contribution of women. That's why President Biden has made gender equality and women's rights a priority of our foreign policy. Uh, as some of you know, we recently launched the first ever cross-government strategy on women's global economic security to try to help reduce the enduring wage gap, to improve access to well-paying jobs, to dismantle barriers to women's economic participation. In December, the United States also updated our strategy to prevent and respond to gender-based violence globally, including new efforts to expand access to programs for historically marginalized communities. We're also learning from and teaming up with governments, civil society, the private sector, and other countries to work toward gender equality together, including, of course, the women that we're honoring today. One of those women, Hadila Bel Aziz, noted that when it comes to advancing this struggle, success is not about one big act, not about one big act of heroism but 100 small battles. To our honorees, the United States is proud to be by your side as you and others wage those 100 small battles, day in, day out, and we will be there and be there with you for the long haul. That includes, of course, the First Lady of the United States, Dr. Jill Biden. Thank you. The First Lady. Thank you. And thank you, Secretary Blinken. Tony, when Joe selected you to be Secretary of State, he knew that we had much to do abroad, from putting diplomacy at the center of foreign policy to rebuilding our global partnerships. And with every challenge we faced, you have ensured that we're better able to deliver for the American people because we have our allies by our side. Your integrity and statesmanship have helped us rally countries to stand with Ukraine against Russia's war of aggression, strengthen our ability to respond to future health emergencies, and confront the climate crisis. Thank you for all that you do. As the Secretary said, we are joined by leaders from around our country and across the globe. So to all of the members of the Diplomatic Corps here, thank you for joining us today. And uh, as the Secretary said, the family of the incomparable Secretary Albright is with us, and I'm going to ask you to stand. And they all came to help us carry on her legacy. And we have our Gender Policy Council, the first of its kind, and other leaders from across our administration. 
This audience is a testament to our national commitment to gender equality around the globe and the powerful influence of the people we honor today, women of courage. Right here in the East Wing, we will tell their stories of fearlessness, resilience, and hope. We will hear from them in their own words. And there are people outside of this room who need to hear their stories too. The girls who will inherit this world. The future engineer who loves exploring, who sees magic in mechanics and technologies that connect us to each other, but is told, there's no place for you in the classroom. The future president or prime minister who is told that her voice is too loud or too bossy or too feminine, whatever that means. <laughs> the child who lives in fear. The star who is told to hide her light. The girl who feels the smallness of the world closing in, afraid that her dreams are just too big to carry alone. Again and again and again, they wake up to find a world made for someone else and watch their brothers and their fathers and their uncles and their neighbors rise and grow while they are told to shrink, told that they're not good enough, not strong enough, not worthy of the lives that they dream about. But today, we're here to tell girls everywhere the truth that they need to hear. Yes, you matter. Yes, you can make a difference. And that's why we wanted to bring the leaders we're honoring today and the stories that they share to the biggest stage we could, the White House. And Tony, thank you for helping us do that. Girls everywhere need to know that there are women fighting for them and winning, opening doors, transforming schools and communities and governments, building a better world for all of us. And we're also here to say to their brothers and their fathers and their husbands and their friends, as much as we need women who are willing to speak up, we need more men who are willing to listen and act. We need more men to hold each other accountable when their sisters are being hurt or left behind. We need more men who nurture families, who feed and teach and mentor, who build safer communities. We need more men who know that caring, collaboration, and kindness are signs of strength, not weakness. Men, we need you to support the women who are fighting for their rights and to lift up those who have been silenced. Be partners, be partners with women become the men of courage we need. Only then will we be able to build a world where men and women are equal and all people are free. So to all the women whom we are honoring today, know that the um, enormous good you've done has no end. It touches every person who hears your story. It transforms us with new hope. As you seek justice, speak out, and pursue peace, you inspire others to find courage within ourselves and rise to that same call. And to every little girl who has wondered, can I, one person, one voice, one girl, fix what's broken? Let the women that we celebrate today be an answer to that question, an unequivocal yes.
when you learn and explore, when you raise your voice, when you move through the world with your shoulders back and your head held high, step by step, you shift the ground beneath you. Draw strength from the women of courage who came before you. Share that strength with the sisterhood that surrounds you. And the ripples of that power will transform our world. And as you take those steps, as you grow into the women you will be, remember, you are never alone. Thank you.